Hey guys, Sean here. Welcome to the F1 Word and to my 2018 driver lineup prediction video. Finally, I'm going to do it. I have decided to bite the bullet, put my neck on the line and absolutely go for this now. We will start with the confirmed lineups for next year. Haas have confirmed they'll stick with Roman Grosjean and Kevin Magnussen, as we already know. Great call by them. They had a very good first season. As teammates, then they come into a second season. Very, very solid. Picking up points as a team, and those two seem to work well together, so I think it's a really good call from Haas. Red Bull, although no official statement, Christian Horner's kind of said it, and it's I think with them both under contract for next year, they will stick with Daniel Ricciardo and Max Verstappen. And after Max Verstappen's apology, after Hungary, massive credit to him for that, um, even though I still stand by the fact it was just a mistake, but at least he's held his hands up and said, you know, it was an error. I'm sorry. I'll try not to let it happen again. Let's move on. Credit to him. So that kind of wound, if you like, has been healed very, very quickly. And that's a very mature move from Max Verstappen in the end from what Daniel Ricciardo basically called an immature accident, effectively. So credit to him for that. We expect Mercedes will stick with Valtteri Bottas. I think we all expect that. And Lewis Hamilton for 2018. Bottas had a very, very good season. He kind of came in and we expected him to come in, didn't we? To be uh, Lewis Hamilton's number two. And he's absolutely proved us wrong. He's been just as quick at times as Lewis Hamilton. I mean, when Lewis Hamilton is on his day, like Silverstone, for example, nobody can get near him, let alone his teammates. So I think Bottas has been stellar this season, absolutely deserves a second year at Mercedes. And he's still in the title hunt, of course. Who knows? Who Wouldn't that be a great twist? I'd absolutely love that. And of course, Lewis Hamilton is already contracted for one more year at Mercedes. Uh, I'd said it last week, and that is that Ferrari will stick with Vettel and Raikkonen. They'll announce that at Monza, is expected anyway, that they'll announce that at Monza. It was rumoured towards the end of the weekend. Uh, I like Kimi Raikkonen, I absolutely do, but I just, I feel it's time for him to move on. And this feels like Ferrari are saying, we want a number two for Vettel, and we know you're willing to do it. We know, or it's rumoured, it is rumoured, that's the big the big word of the day, I think, that Vettel demanded Raikkonen as a teammate if he was to pen a new deal. Raikkonen's willing to be his number two, and he's dropping off in pace, and that suits Sebastian Vettel down to a T. From what everybody understands, he gets to decide who his teammate is effectively or gets the veto on his teammate, which is why we know he will never partner Lewis Hamilton at Ferrari. So I think, yeah, that's a, a disappointing one for some of the young drivers or the other drivers on the grid, like Sergio Perez, for example, who absolutely deserve a crack at that seat. But there you go. They're going to stick with Vettel and Raikkonen for 2018. Now, the midfield. This is where it gets a little bit trickier to predict. I'm going to start with Renault. Obviously, Nico Hülkenberg signed a multi-year deal, so he's going to stay for next year. Absolutely. He's been he's been good this season, given the car he's got on the engine. I think he's done very, very well. But his teammate. Now, for me, this is between three. That's Robert Kubica, Nicholas Latifi, and Esteban Ocon. I think it's probably a year too early for Latifi, and I'm not sure on Ocon. Now, Kubica, you know, I don't know, a month ago, I would have said Ocon was nailed on for that seat. But given Kubica's incredible performance in the test, you know, I can't see why Renault would invest all this time in him, all this effort in him, and then him come out and prove he's capable and then not snap him up. So for me, possibly heart overhead, I'm going to go Nico Hulkenberg and Robert Kubica at Renault for 2018. One thing that absolutely does do is that pretty much nails down Force India as well. Sergio Perez will stay, no doubt about that in my mind, and Esteban Ocon will remain as his teammate. They've been good, very, very consistent. If they can avoid crashing into each other, I mean, the guys don't seem to like each other, but so long as they're not crashing into each other, that doesn't matter. <laughs> they just need to stop doing that. But I think Force India will be silly to let either of those go, and I think they will stick with Sergio Perez and Esteban Ocon. So Renault locking their seats down made that a damn sight easier. McLaren. Ah, now, a couple of months ago, this would have all come down to the engine deal and what they were going to do. It's now rumoured it'll be Renault, but then it seems to be a different engine every other week. So I don't know what they're going to do. Alonso, where does he go? You know, I've basically said Red Bull, Mercedes, Ferrari, and Renault are all locked off. That really only leaves McLaren. Um, I did do a video on his future a couple of weeks ago. I said possibly Williams, but that was, again, a little bit heart overhead, if I'm being honest. But I think I can see him signing one more year at McLaren and basically saying, look, guys, I'll give you one more season. Get it right or I'm off whether I've got a seat or not. Even if I have to retire, I am gone at the end of next year if we don't get this right. I don't know about the engine. I haven't got a clue. Like I said, it changed every other week. I would still say Mercedes if they were going to change. I don't see why they go to Renault. It's a step up, but it's not enough of a step up for McLaren. So I don't know. But I think Fernando Alonso and Stoffer Van Dorn will stay for 2018. I think Van Dorn's done well, given all the problems with the car. So I think McLaren will stick as well. Now, Toro Rosso. Yes, they've basically said, I mean, Christian Horner said, why wouldn't we keep Science and Kvyat? Um... Science, yes. Kvyat, no. I, I don't know why you would keep him, given the, certainly the last few races he's had. He's not been great, has he? He's really struggled. I mean, to be fair to him, the problems he's having were completely forced on him by Red Bull when they basically kicked him in the gut massively when they booted him out of Red Bull and demoted him to Toro Rosso because he had a bad race. If at all... They said a bad start to the season, but I don't see it at all. He had their only podium at that point when they kicked him down and they really, really gave him a good kicking, didn't they, that season? And I think that's probably where this all stems from. 
I would prefer another young driver to get a crack. And I'm going to go with Pierre Gasly to partner Carlos Sainz because I think he is at the point now where he needs a Red Bull driver, a Toro Rosso driver. He's coming towards the end of that stint, if you like, in the Red Bull young driver program. So I think now is his time. They need to give him that chance. They should have given him it last year, but they've got to do it for next season. So that is Carlos Sainz and Pierre Gasly at Toro Rosso once again. Possibly heart overhead, but we shall see. Sauber and basically Ferrari's B team now, aren't they? They are the junior outfit. Ferrari said it's Sauber. That suits them. I think with the deal, they'll get an engine discount and probably a little bit of money pumped in as well. But what does that mean for their driver lineup for next year? One thing I'm pretty confident it does mean is that Pascal Wehrlein will be moved on. There is no way in hell Ferrari are going to allow a Mercedes Junior to drive that Sauber with a Ferrari engine in it. Absolutely no way. Wehrlein will move on. Marcus Ericsson's a tough one. He's been pretty poor this season. He's not had a great car, let's be fair to him, but he's been outpaced by Wehrlein so often this season. He's just been pretty dreadful. However, his backers, with all their money, also own big stakes in the team and fund the team. So I don't know. I would guess Ferrari are going to pump some money into Sauber and maybe get rid of that and kind of counterbalance that. So for me, I'm going to say Ericsson and Verlein are going to go. This is entirely heart overhead for Sauber. I'm going to be completely honest about that. Charles Leclerc would get that seat alongside Ericsson over Antonio Giovinazzi any day in my mind. However, they both must be in Formula One next year. There is no doubt about that whatsoever. So for me, heart overhead, Charles Leclerc and Antonio Giovinazzi in the Sauber for 2018. Head to head, winner gets a Ferrari seat in 2019. There you go. How good does that sound? What a subplot that would be in a season. Keeping an eye on that, a reason to watch Sauber. Also, I expect a change of livery. It would be nice. A bit of a red, nice red and white, you know. Yeah, I'm just saying Sauber becoming the B team, they might as well look like a Ferrari. So yeah, Leclerc and Giovinazzi for 2018, which leaves us one more team. And that is Williams. And guys, I have toiled over this. I've spent hours trying to work out who is going to partner Lance Stroll next season. I do think Stroll will get a second season. He's not been great since his issues at the start of the season. He's definitely got better and improved and he's shown that he's growing. But I know a lot of people don't like him. You know, a lot of money behind him. Some see him as Deadwood. I don't think he's Deadwood yet. I think a second season will do him good. And if he still improves over next year, then maybe he'll get a long-term future in Formula 1. But it'll probably be another year for Stroll. But it's who partners him. Felipe Massa wants to stay at Williams for 2018, which isn't bad for a guy that wanted to retire as soon as eight months ago. Uh, but he came back for this season with the regulation change to help the team out. But I think it's time really for him to move on and allow some of the younger drivers to come through, give somebody else a crack at that seat. There were rumours that Jensen Button was approached. I think he said it himself, but he's enjoying retirement. And rightly so, he looks like he's having a cracking time based on his Twitter feed, at least. So I think that's it for Williams. I think they'll let Massa go. They'll not pursue Button any further. And I've kind of toiled over it and put two and two together and come up with seven as I often do in Formula 1, and a lot of people do, to fair, not just me. And I kind of feel with the ties to Mercedes, and obviously they'll want to keep him in the sport with him leaving Sauber, I think Pascal Wehrlein will partner Lance Stroll at Williams for 2018. I just think Mercedes want to keep him in, don't they? They absolutely do. The ties to Toto Wolff for Williams and the ties to Mercedes and the deal they've got, it kind of makes sense for him to have a crack at that seat. And whether he'll get a Mercedes seat in the near future, I don't know. But if not, that is a good long-term lineup for Williams there. So fingers crossed they're going to get their act together. And I hope for Verline's sake, he gets a seat in F1 because he has been pretty decent this season. And he was for Manor as well, to be fair to him. But that is it, guys. That's as far as I can go because that is 10 teams. And that is all we have at the moment. Hopefully we'll get some more in the future, certainly the next couple of seasons. But but that is it, guys. Do you agree with my predictions? Are there any drivers I've missed off that you think deserve a seat in F1? And what do you think about Kimi Raikkonen staying for another year at Ferrari? I'm still torn on it. I love him, but I'm just so torn on it. I think it was time to maybe make a change. I will be back later in the week with another video, probably Sunday, but no later than Monday. And keep an eye on the channel, guys, because if you're a fan of the F1 games, I'll be making an announcement in the next few days regarding F1 2017 career mode. I can't wait. About three weeks away now. Very exciting stuff so definitely keep an eye out for that but as ever guys thank you so much for watching i've been sean this has been the f1 word and until next time goodbye